coming back to accounts receivable, let's look at the individual aspects of accounts receivable. Let's look at Southside Timber Supplies account here. I've taken it back to zero as a new account. If I click to select the account, the account selected on the left-hand side here. Okay, let's say that this Mr. Handyman guy has been mowing the lawn each month, each week. So he enters in the dates that he mows the lawn. So let's say that last month he, or this month he's mowed it on the 1st and he's mowed it on the 8th and he's also mowed it on the, and he mows it on the 22nd. Right, so I'm just going to put in the mowed lawn. So I'm going to put down thirty dollars each time each time I mow the lawn. So right now, oh, at the end of each each time I mowed the lawn, on the eighth I came in that night and I entered in thirty dollars. On the fifteenth I came and I entered in that. So let's say that I was doing this as I went along each night. So I'd come in each night, I entered it in there, and now I've recorded now and I've recorded these amounts. Now at the end of the month I can give the client an invoice. I have two choices. Either I create an invoice separately from the invoice section or I can create an invoice directly from the accounts receivable screen. Makes more sense to create the invoice from here because then you have tracking. You can on the invoice then it will appear on the invoice screen that it came from an accounts receivable. So if you're creating an invoice, I'd be creating it from here. Create invoice. See this icon here? If I click this, it's going to create an invoice for all your entries on the screen. In this, per, in, this, in this instance, of course, we want to do that. But I'm going to click no. I'm going to show you something. What if we already had another entry on the screen that happened to be from July? So it's, yeah, it happened to be from June, right? So from the previous month before that. Right. I'm going to exit that screen and come back in for a second so that it puts it in date order for me. Okay, so, so in June, I previously mowed the lawn for him. And let's just assume that he's already paid it, even though it doesn't appear he's being paid. Let's just forget about that for a minute. Let's assume right now that he already paid June. If I was to create the invoice, if I just click this straight off, it's going to create an invoice for every entry on the screen. But we don't want that. He's already paid for June. See this little icon underneath, this little blue strip? If I click that blue strip, this checkbox comes up. That checkbox is for you to select individual items to be included in on this invoice. Aha. Uh -huh. And all I want is these four entries. I'm selecting the entries I want to include. Now if I click create invoice, see that? It's only it returns those four entries to the screen. It says they're the entries that you want to include. Yes. So I'm going to create an invoice now. If I click yes, it comes up with another screen. Do these amounts include and contain tax? In this instance, it's sales tax. We know that because I collect sales tax for the customers. So it's yes, it includes sales tax. If you don't collect, if, you are, if you're in a country or you're not required to collect sales tax, then you click no, of course. So in this instance, this guy collects sales tax. He says yes. Now the system is going to take a couple of seconds. It's going to run away. It's going to perform some calculations and now it says invoice created and it says there may be some editing required. Of course there is. We click OK and you see on the screen here, it tells us what the invoice number that entry appears on. If I click all now, all my entries will return to the screen, even that last one. So it proves that that didn't go on the invoice, only these four did. Now to turn that back off, I just click that blue line again and that turns that back off again. Let's go have a look, quick look at the invoice screen and we'll see that invoice. Wherever it may be. Ah, well let's look up here. Accounts receivable. Let's just select them. There we go. It's filtered our accounts receivable. This is the invoice that we just created. Um, obviously the, the date has to be changed. Remember it said some, in, some areas have to be edited. There's no amounts there yet, but if we click edit, it will update the amounts straight away. And now I can change the date, so it would be today's date. 
Okay, it's coming up with that date because it's referring to the date that's already there. So to put in today's date, I'm going to have to change it to July. And I think the date is the 23rd, is it? Yeah. So it's highlighted that, and there's July 23rd. Okay, we see that the actual information, the actual address details of the, the uh, account have already been put in here for you because that's the link between the address book and the accounts receivable. So we already entered that in there. And if you have a look in the bottom here, you see that each individual entry has been entered in. It shows the date and it shows the description as per what was entered in the accounts receivable. It calculated out the tax because we told it, it in, the amounts included sales tax. And it's done everything for us. Okay, so if you have a look here, Southside Timber Supplies. That is where I mentioned before that if you're creating an invoice for an accounts receivable, you're best doing that from the accounts receivable. That way, it gets listed against an accounts receivable because if you don't, this is what's going to happen. If you don't do that, you don't have this choice. Because if you just create a new invoice from here, you don't have the choice of doing this. However, we know you do. If you do create and if you do do it back to front and you do if you don't create the invoice from the accounts receivable area, but you create it from here, just make sure that you have this turned on. If you turn this on, you have that additional column coming up. And you can do it back to front because then you can just select this. But what happens is in the accounts receivable, you only see one entry. It refers to the invoice itself. It won't refer to the individual cuts. Okay, if you do it back to front, the invoice and the accounts receivable are laid out exactly with each individual entry. Okay, let's be aware of that. Right, jumping back into accounts receivable. Let's jump back into him. So now we've issued an invoice. It's come up. At the end of the month, or the end of the following month, whenever it is, whatever period of time that we've requested that they pay by, let's say that this guy's come and paid us. So he's paid us the money on invoice. You have two options, folks. Either you can enter that entry manually into the income, just to pay this invoice, or you can enter it coming from accounts receivable. It's your choice how you run your accounts. First thing you need to do is, if we look down the list here, we can say, mark each entry as being paid. So we can say, from this invoice here, he paid this invoice, right? So if we mark it, See, the once we mark it, it says yes. And the moment we mark it, it reduces the balance amount. Watch that. It says the balance on the account is now this, because he's paid us for these. And we've said we've marked it that he's already paid us, and it's reduced the amount that he owes us on account. It hasn't updated the income yet. It's just reduced the amount. Now, why would you want to mark this? Because there could be an instance where you don't receive all the money. He might be turning around saying, hang on, you actually did not mow my lawn on the 15th of July. I don't remember that being done. You mowed it here and you mowed it here, but I don't remember you coming that week and mowed it. I didn't, I didn't think it was mowed that week at all. So he might decide that, well, I've already marked it as being yes. Yes, I want to undo that. Yep, yeah, so I've undone that now. So it might be that he's disputing that week. So you record that, yes, he's, he's paid us these three amounts, and but he didn't pay us for this one. So then you can go in dispute and work it out with him later on what you're going to do about it. Okay, so that's that's why you, you come down the list and you mark off is yes. So obviously if he's paid all the invoices, you just quickly go down and mark everything. Right, I'm just going to jump to another video.